one of the respected media men who look back over the years at the career of Ali and in particular his relationship with Howard Cosell was author and reporter Dave Kindred. Loudmouth boxer, a Christian turned Muslim from Kentucky who used rhyming verse to communicate his self-regard. <laughs> the Ali shuffle is a dance that will make you scuffle. And a loudmouth lawyer turned sports reporter, a Jew from Brooklyn, who used big words to signal his intelligence. You're being extremely truculent. Whatever truculent means, if that's good, I'm there. One made his fortune with his lightning fists. <laughs> the other with his nasal voice. I've known Ali for so many years and so intimately. And I know that as a man, he's a chameleon. They both use their considerable intellects to devastating effect. And in each other, they found the perfect foils, the perfect partners, co-stars in the most compelling drama in sports. The rise and fall and rise again of Muhammad Ali. I think I'm the only uh, athlete, black or white, regardless of what sport, that's wise enough to match wits with you. And I'm taking enough off of you. You can't fight, you can't throw no punches, you don't have no muscles, you've never had a physical contact with nothing in your life like sports, and you're going to stand up here and tell me about my legs and about football, you're going to know about everything. Well, I'm getting sick and tired of it, and I want to show the world that it really ain't nothing to you. Don't touch me. I'll beat your brains out. In Sound and Fury, his book about the Muhammad Ali-Howard Cosell relationship, Dave Kindred quoted Edith Wharton, who said, there are two ways of spreading light, to be the candle or the mirror that reflects it. Ali, of course, was, was the flame. Ali was the light. You know, everything, everywhere he went, he brought the light with him. Cosell was the reflector. Cosell was the magnifier, even, of, of Ali. You know, without Cosell, Ali would have existed without Ali. I'm not sure Cosell would have been Cosell. But uh, as a team, they were perfect. They complemented each other. Uh, they worked hand in hand uh, it, better than anybody I've ever seen. In 1967, when Ali refused induction in the armed forces, declaring himself a conscientious objector, Cosell was there. We have borne witness, in effect, to a different kind of requiem for a heavyweight. And when Ali's championship was taken from him, Cosell stood not quite alone, but in the minority against the torrent of Ali detractors. Cosell, a major in the U.S. Army during World War II, believed that Ali had the constitutional right to, uh, to decline service. And he was never on record as saying he agreed with him. He just agreed that he had that right as an American. When Ali finally returned from exile after four years, Cosell was there to welcome him back. We had enough of that for the past, I think, six years. You should have enough of me by now. I haven't had enough of you by now. Apparently, I'm going to have a lot more of you. Statement? No. But in 1974, when Ali went off to Zaire to fight George Foreman, who seemed invincible, Cosell told it like it was or at least how he perceived it. Before the Foreman fight, uh, before the Zaire fight, you know, Howard basically declared Ali dead. You know, there's no sense in doing this. Why don't you quit, Muhammad? When you come to Africa talking like that, you're the minority in Africa, but you're the majority over here. I'll get you in Africa, you and George. I got something for you both in Africa. Oh, he's taking your laugh. <laughs> I don't mean to scare you, Howard, I'm just joking. I'm terrified. Yeah, I see you kind of sweat there. After returning from Africa, having shocked the world again by bagging his quarry and reclaiming the heavyweight championship, Ali playfully confronted Cosell. I want to say one thing while we live and you can't erase this. You always said, Muhammad, you're not the man you were 10 years ago, right? Right. Well, I'm going to ask your wife, are you the man you was last year? In later years, after watching Ali fight for too long and his body begin to break down, Cosell pushed for boxing to be banned. He was attacked as a hypocrite for opposing the sport only after the era dominated by Ali and, in a way, Cosell had ended. Some truth in that, but there's also truth in the fact that Howard, for maybe 10 years before Ali finished, uh, was a, a loud, as he always was, a loud advocate of reforms in boxing. 
Then, by the mid-1980s, the two loudest, most consequential voices of their generation in sports were mostly silenced. ABC let Cosell go in 1985. And at the same time, all the punishment Ali had absorbed in the ring was slowing his muscles and his mouth. The candle in the mirror burned bright no more. But never before and never since has such a partnership illuminated so much. I won Cosell. You are the greatest, son. I'm not proud of you. Good luck, you, and it's not goodbye. It's over. Thank you, Harold.